Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, this is your latest on what has gone on today, you know I wanted to give you guys a double upload today, I'm not going to lie, and um, nothing happened. It, well, I've got the Chelsea side of things covered, but for the other side of things, nothing happened. Argentina done well in a friendly against Jamaica. Brazil done well in a friendly against Tunisia. Apart from that, I ain't got much to say. Algeria beat Nigeria as well, just saying. Anyway, uh, before my Nigerian friends decide to leave the, 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 the video, please don't stay. <laughs> um, this video is brought to you by One Football. Hit the link in the description to download the OneFootball app now for all of your footballing latest, your scores, your results, your stats, team, player, whatever, your latest news. It's all there. Plus, OneFootball is bringing Italian Serie A to the UK and Ireland. So if you're in the UK and Ireland, you are going to be able to watch for free one Italian Serie A game per match day. On top of that, all Italian Serie A highlights will be available to watch in the OneFootball app. So if you want to catch up, you know where to find it. One football link in the description, download it now and enjoy. Let's get cracking with today's Chelsea latest whilst we uh, try to find out what else is going on in the football stratosphere, should I say. Let me know down below. I want to let you know because I'm planning double uploads for the rest of this week, including up until Friday with the match preview for Saturday, Crystal Palace versus Chelsea. I will be dropping double uploads. So... If there's any gen generic football stuff you want me to discuss, anything in the football world that's not Chelsea, let me know. That way I can balance it out because I want to bring more non-Chelsea related content to the channel, but I want to keep the Chelsea content as well. So I'm, just, I'm only adding on. Let me know what you'd like me to bring down below. Much appreciated. Let's get cracking with today's Chelsea news though. Starting off with a big piece of news about Jude Bellingham. Let's get cracking. Matt Law fills us in, saying, Chelsea are trying to jump up the Bellingham queue. Bowley trying to muscle in on Madrid and Liverpool. Interest also remains in Rice. Matt Law also says, bit in here about the fact Chelsea will assess their goalkeeper options over the next weeks and months too. This is a little bit of a weird situation now. With the whole goalkeeper situation, I'm going to come to in a sec. But with Jude Bellingham, Jude Bellingham is someone that we just know all the top clubs are going to try and go after. Very decent midfielder, young, promising, looking very good in Germany, looking good for England. Even though that's not a very easy thing to do nowadays under Gareth Southgate. But he's definitely a promising uh, footballer. And the one thing that's put in, I think, a lot of people off is the price tag. He is going to cost, what, £130 million? £130 million. Here's the truth. You are no way going to be able to have Bellingham and Rice in the same team. No way. Because you're going to have to pay, what, £270 million for both? Or what, £250 million for both? It's just not going to happen. I doubt there's going to be any team that will fork out that much money for Bellingham and for Rice. So it's going to be one or the other. Who would I take between Bellingham and Rice if Chelsea are actually interested in both? It's a weird one because, look, here's my honest take on it. Personally, for future, I would probably take Bellingham. In terms of how we play, I would probably take Bellingham. But when you look at the price tags out there, 130, 150, 120, there are footballers out there. There are midfielders out there that you can just get for less. I spoke a couple of days ago about Chelsea's interest in AC Milan's players, Rafael Liao, as well as the update of a possible move for Benassa. Benassa, who plays for AC Milan in midfield, would probably go in the region of, what, 35, 40 million. Then I saw the comments, and a lot of you were bringing up a very, very good midfielder who he plays alongside. Tonali. Tonali, top central midfielder. How much would he cost? Wouldn't be 100 million, would it? But would you take him in your team? Absolutely. This is my point. There are other midfielders on the planet. This, this fascination that we must go in for... Declan Rice or Bellingham. I truly, truly believe, yes, they are good players, but the value is up simply because of their nationality. I, I truly believe, I think there is an English tax, especially when it's to do with Premier League clubs. You know, we're the best league in the world. Let's have it right. When you're talking about an export like a Bellingham who plays elsewhere, coming back in to this country, who's playing very well at Dortmund, who is young, 
automatically because there's interest you're interesting the top teams in this league therefore some of the top teams in the world all of a sudden interested Real Madrid included the price is going to be astronomical same goes for Declan Rice but when you're looking at some of the other players I just mentioned you're not hearing all massive big clubs going after them you might be hearing one I'll give you an example like Benassa Liverpool are interested we know this they're ready to pay him his the salary that he actually wants because he turned down a 3.5 million euro deal with AC Milan. He wants more. Liverpool will be prepared to offer him the four that he wants. So there's that. Tonali is another one that I think would probably move for much less and would take much less uh, wages. Would he come in and do a job though? I actually think he would. That's the thing. So do we try and stick out for the big money spending moves like a uh, Bellingham, Declan Rice? As I've said, personally, I would probably, t I'd take Bellingham. On his ability, I would take Bellingham and I think he would do well. But it's a lot of money, 130 million. Here's the thing with Chelsea, we have PTSD. When we spend big money, it tends to go wrong. <laughs> we, we, we tend to get the, the, the small money moves right. Last, every time we spend in excess of 70, 80 million, it tends to go pear-shaped. The only one that hasn't really gone pear-shaped, I would say, and even then there's some criticism. However... There's definitely room. It's Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz, just over 70 million. We get him in and it's Kai Havertz. You know, we, we, we do have patience with Kai Havertz and we're waiting for him to flourish into what we know he can be. But every other single footballer that we've got uh, in and around that margin or more has just always gone wrong. So should we really spend that much on Bellingham or Declan Rice? I'm going to leave it to you. Let me know down below what you guys would do. I'd love to hear it. Um, talking about Brighton and what we just not long ago did against them in terms of playing a friendly behind closed doors. Simon Johnson gives us an update on what actually went down there. Let's check it out. In Chelsea's friendly win against Brighton last weekend, Graham Potter played a back four consisting of Wesley Fofana and Khalidou Koulibaly in the middle, with Ruben Loftus-Cheek at right back and Ben Chilwell at left back. Um, there's also about Chalaba being tested in the number six role. Now, this is an interesting one because we know Chalaba can play there, not, not to a T, but he's done it before. He has some experience. He might be able to... Who knows? Develop, prosper into a decent number six. And it might be an opportunity for him to really cement himself because the centre-back position is very, very, very tough to get into now. With all sorts of players here now in the centre-back role, Chalaba might have his work cut out for him. But in a midfield role, a DM role, should I say, a number six, who knows? Who knows? That's good. In terms of that friendly, though, as it mentioned... Fofana Koulibaly in the middle, middle of a back four. Loftus-Cheek at right back and Bento at left back. I just want to make this clear. I think a lot of people seem to be a bit like bewildered at why Loftus-Cheek was playing right back. And I get that. But when you look at who was actually away on international duty, it makes sense. Last weekend, players had already left for international duty. There's no other right back we have. We don't have another right back. And this is a, this is a concern, should I say. Why? Because in the transfer market, we actually addressed quite a few positions. However, we didn't address the right wing back role. We have Reese James. We have Aspie. Aspie, though, ah, not as a right back. Not anymore. Not anymore. He can't do it. Can't do it. Maybe he can do it for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. But there's no one else. We didn't actually bring in anyone to be a backup for Reese James. Or not even just a backup, but someone to compete with him. And in the same way we got Cucurella, who can now compete with Ben Chilwell. And boom, we've got ourselves two options. We don't have that at right wing back. Or right back, should I say. We've got Reese James. That's basically it. And he was away. Aspie's away. There's no one else. So Loftus-Cheek playing right back. For that friendly, I can understand. I can understand. So... No need to cause a panic, no need to go into one based on uh, what Graham Potter done in that friendly against Brighton. But I do want to say, Graham Potter's come from Brighton. Tariq Lamptey, remember him? Would be good, just saying. Let's maybe try and get him back, maybe. Who knows? Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. Now, I want to, there's two more things to talk about. This I want to mention because I feel like this is important. I feel like this is important because I wanted to clarify We've given Graham Potter, I was going to say Harry Potter, I swear I was going to say Harry Potter then, I corrected myself, Graham Potter. <laughs> we gave Graham Potter a five-year deal, 
worth 60 million pounds if he were to get sacked tomorrow touch wood god forbid but if he were to get sacked at some point he would be receiving compensation of 60 million he'd be getting a payout of his 60 million contract it's ridiculous as far as i'm concerned to give a manager that much in a contract i think is is, is suicidal especially in today's um environment where it's a results-based business i understand that you're meant to be giving managers time but you should be giving managers time whilst also thinking about the possibilities you know if this guy does not perform and you have to get rid of him then what you're gonna have to fork out 16 million pounds to compensate his contract it's crazy you know good to give time but give time by extending contracts by giving renewals by you know having an evaluation and going you're doing really well we'd like to offer you two more years please you know like everyone else does that's just the way to do it you know financially it's a smart thing to do um but i wanted to show you this because it shows the standard the standard. Check this out. From Matt Law, Moyes is under pressure at West Ham. Moyes. Why? Because West Ham are currently sitting, is it 18th or 17th? But they're there. They're there. After five, six games, boom, in that, in that zone of the Premier League table, no matter what you did last season, forget the semi-final of the Europa League. Forget that. Now forget the really good achievement of following in a fantastic league position. Now forget that. Forget that. Six games into the season, boom, you're there. No, mate, you're under pressure. You're under pressure. That's West Ham. So that's why I wanted to show you that example. Because now if, and I hope not, right? I hope not. And I think we need to give Graham Potter the chance. But you never know. This is the truth. He might do really well. We might shoot right up the table, but we might not. If we were to slip, we then have to fork out £60 million if Todd Bowley and his team decide to take action. It's not smart. I just wanted to highlight that because you look at West Ham, for example, pressure, okay, Moyes, who's doing really well. But even they're thinking, no, no, no. There's a certain level you can't drop to. If not, we're going to get rid of you. That's the reality of football today. That is, And this is why I also want to say, please, please, please. And I'm not, I'm, for me, I'm not letting it happen again. Do not attach yourselves to a manager, please. Please, please. I remember when I was attached to Jose. Deeply. Yeah? And I paid for it twice. <laughs> twice. I was, you know, there were managers there. Lampard was Lampard because we had an affection but even with Lampard I even then I was like no don't get too attached as a manager do not get too attached and I felt it was correct for him to move on at the time two cool came in done absolute madness won us the Champions League and as much as I was thinking don't get too attached you could not not get attached you know it's too cool what he done for us win the Champions League you're all of a sudden in the history books you know no matter what though this game is ruthless Results can turn at any moment. Don't get attached to Graham Potter, please. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> I'm not allowing it for myself. If you guys want to, you know, go into a, a, a frenzy, if something were to happen, then please be my guest. But I'm not letting it happen to me. Um, so it is what it is. Let's uh, move right on. Let me know your thoughts on that as well. And do you think Potter will be getting the time? Do you think he'll do well? Or do you think he won't? Let me know down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And to end, um, I have to say this because we spoke about Mikel yesterday announcing his retirement from football well another one has decided to call his time on on football and it's this guy what a lad Ramirez has come to Instagram to announce his retirement from professional football and I think it's only right that we also show this and what he's remembered for in a Chelsea top mainly this goal against Barcelona which was just absolutely phenomenal this pass from Lampard by the way oh my god look at the weight the weight on it and the finish <sighs> unbelievable unbelievable but that was the goal that gave us the away goal at the new camp for us to believe even with 10 men down that we were going to go through to the final by getting rid of Barcelona in their backyard with no captain on the pitch absolutely fantastic finish and for that Ramirez I am forever thankful Ramirez happy retirement all the best. Thank you for the memories. He done really well for us in the Chelsea shot. He done really well for us. He was a midfielder. He was a midfielder that you could say he's not Kante, but Kante's got little glimpses of him. Kante plays different to him. Kante, I think even defensively, is much better than, than, than Ramirez. But Ramirez overall was a really, really good midfielder. Just a really good midfielder. Um, and yeah, good luck at retirement, Ramirez. Thank you for everything. Obrigado.
um, as they say in Brazil. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below on everything I've discussed today. Much appreciated. Hit me up in the comment section below and I will see all of you tomorrow for a double upload. Why not? Let's do it. I'll see all of you then. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to download the OneFootball app. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash like button if you have enjoyed this and I'll see all of you tomorrow. Have a good one, people. In a bit, take care and peace.